Welcome to X-Men Evolution episode 41 of Cyclops is Waiting for Me, an X-Men animated recap podcast. I'm Rod, and uh, I'm trying out a teleprompter. We'll see if that makes it smoother or more complicated. <laughs> and I'm JC, and now we get tons of little status updates uh, on our screen that we didn't get in our old uh, podcast recording setup now that we've added video, which you could see on uh, YouTube. So you should do that. Um And then just a quick reminder, uh, Rod and I will be at L.A. Comic Con, both on panels, especially on Saturday. And you should come check us out. Use the promo code Cyclops for 12% off of your ticket price. Now, let's get into our regular rigmarole. Cyclops is Waiting for Me is our weekly podcast series. We are going back and watching every single X-Men animated episode we can find. The podcast started with the original 1992 X-Men, the animated series, which was building up to the release of X-Men 97. And along the way, we launched our companion show called The Xavier Files with interviews from members of the cast. Uh, since season two for X-Men 97 is a ways off at the moment, uh, we are back for our second half of our first walkthrough watch watch. <laughs> through i could say words <coughs> of x-men evolution rock save it yeah. and some quick reminders where recap show about series has started over 20 years ago there will be spoilers if you don't want spoiled for you pause the podcast watch the episode and come back especially this is a pair so watch both of them uh we're yeah, currently it'd be not, weird not to yeah, we're currently not sponsored by or affiliated with marvel marvel animation disney or disney plus in any way and don't forget to follow us on social media at Cyclops IWFM Pod on Instagram, TikTok, uh, Twitter, Threads, and Facebook. And of course, make sure you are following us on any and all of your favorite podcast services. Now into the show. Today we're t- going to be ta- ah, today. Yeah, I can talk now. Today we're going to be talking about season three, episode eleven, titled "Dark Horizon Part One." It aired on August 9th, two thousand three, and currently sits at a seven point eight star rating on IMDb. This. And let's address the uh, elephant in the room with regard to the airing of episodes. So, in two episodes from now, we will cover Cruise Control. Cruise Control aired as the finale of the season, but was meant to be before the Weapon X episode, or sorry, the X-23 episode that we had with John Reisinger. That so makes so much more sense. Contextually, that should have happened, but... Because we're literally going off of airing order, um, and then literally Disney Plus has it in the airing order. Uh, so yeah, that's that's why it's the wrong scenario. So. Yeah, because I, I I was because like, we watched uh, Cruise Control ways back, and then I watched these, and I was like, okay, so I it, it felt like one of those episodes that. Um, they used to do this in like the late 80s, early 90s, where they would have an episode that they could just like fill in for emergency spots, not for the show itself, but for like the network, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, it, it had next to no context as to what was happening. Even in this, uh, you know, coming out of this, there's a mention of, oh, well, Rogue decided to stay behind, but it didn't matter for which reason she was staying behind. Yeah. So it still actually works. Yeah, because you remember when uh, maybe TV still like this. I haven't watched it in a while, but like you know, like a sports game would like end half an hour early or something, and it feels like the network would be like throw this episode of something on, on TV right now. <laughs> oh, see, I thought you were going to go with the other way, which is what I was used to from Saturday morning cartoons of like I would be excited for my show to come on, have not looked at like TV Guide to see what like shows were coming and then it gets preempted by a sports game like especially in the northeast like football or college football and stuff like that and it was like i don't get to watch my show because the shitty college is on tv right now (laughs) that did happen a lot like that or like golf sometimes it was like really random i I feel like i didn't get a lot of golf preempting my stuff when i was you know saturday morning cartoons but mm-hmm. maybe maybe where you are from that was a, a different scenario <laughs> around maybe that was more like a sunday afternoon thing like i was like wanting to turning on a station i knew that had cartoons and instead it was like golf yeah <laughs> i just knew there yeah, was a lot more golf like, than i ever cared for usa would do that i feel like <laughs> But we are not here to talk about golf or Sunday morning cartoons. We are here to talk about a Saturday morning cartoon. Yeah, this one, um, I've just gotten used to watching the previously ons now because you never know Mm -hmm. when this episode is going to start. And there's also on these no skip option. Like even even recently watching uh, Rebuilding the, was it Rebuilding the Universe with us? It's the Lego Star Wars stuff. Oh, okay. Like there's literally the 
skip recap of the episode that I watched three seconds ago. Yeah, right. <laughs> but it literally skips to the end of the recap perfectly. Here, because it flows so perfectly into it, like, you actually shouldn't skip them. Yeah. So this one basically shows um, a few episodes back when with Mesmero um, getting, like, all the stuff for Apocalypse and then shows flashbacks like Rogue uh, having the thing where she um, absorbed so many people that it was, like, coming out in different ways which is and also, taking guess, over her whole personality too yeah and i guess it's yeah. also kind of a hint that like uh xavier was not successful in exercising those demons <laughs> it also feels like it makes the whole episode moot because of what happens in this episode like they basically undid the thing that xavier did super quickly it wasn't even like a season later it was just like and yeah. now she's getting everybody's shit back again right <laughs> Like, shy of Juggernaut, she got everybody plus more. That's right, yeah. yeah. And, and no one was the wiser for a while. Um, mm-hmm. But it does segue back into the mansion at nighttime. Um, you see the outline of who you think is Rogue. I, they, it looked like they might have been trying to keep it a little mysterious for like half a second. But then you, you, you see the hair later. In almost in the same way of the previous episode with X-23, where they do the uh, shadow as they're opening the door. Mm-hmm. It's so obviously her silhouette. It's not even close. Yeah. And yeah. to the writer's credits, they did kind of do this um, ad- like attack, I guess, whatever, in order, like a correct order. So mm-hmm. like Rogue goes and absorbs Xavier first, then Jean. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, then, and then I think Scott, because of what we hear from Kitty... I and, hope that it's her attacking Scott and that's all that's happening. Yeah, that's another thing. The noises... It did, sounded like other things going and, on. And, and, and also, that means those walls are pretty thin. That tracks. They just yeah. rebuilt it, right? It'd be quick. <laughs> it's, it's made out of cardboard, basically. Yeah. yeah. And you think that Kitty's going to get away because she wakes up, and then she hides behind the door when Rogue comes in, and then she phases through the wall, but it takes like five seconds for Rogue to catch up to Kitty. Uh, absorb her powers and then because she actually does get to Scott's room yeah oh that's right yeah she gets to Scott's room and realizes he's passed out and she's like well this is not good Um, and and then uh, Rogue gets her and then it cuts to the intro which I I did watch this time it was different but like once again like it's whatever I I think it's funny because especially we got spoiled with X-Men 97 that they were adjusting the intro from a character basis like four different times, let alone the scenes that were references to like stuff you might need to know. But like the second storm is not on the team. The second storm switches her outfit when Nightcrawler is on the team. All that stuff is compensated for in that intro here. It's like, well, we haven't talked about Spike in five episodes and he's still listed as a part of the team. (laughs) It's too expensive to change it now. And they haven't even addressed it. That's right. Because he he just, he just goes off with the Morlocks and Storm hasn't really mentioned him at all or being nope. worried about Nobody him. Nobody has. Anything. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I, I mean, to be honest, I didn't either. So I guess that. <laughs> <laughs> but the irony t- is that it's after they actually did a change to the intro. Yeah. Right. Like, if there was a time that if he was going to disappear for an extended period of time and you were going to switch it, this would have been when you did it, and they decided not to. And I guess minor spoiler, he doesn't come back for the rest of the season, so... Correct. Like, okay. Um, But then when it comes back from that animated intro... um, uh, Kitty's alarm goes off. It's at 8.34. I don't usually take specific notes like that. But that was a little specific. Um, I th- To me, it signaled that Kitty's the weird girl. Because, like, you know, I, I, f- I feel... And someone, correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like most of us, you know, for school and stuff, we set an alarm for, like, 7 or 8 or, you know, even number or whatever, 7.30. And maybe snooze until then or whatever. But uh, there'd always be that one weird kid to be like, I set my alarm for 7.53 a.m. <laughs> do you know why the weird kids... Why we do it? Oh, you do that? <laughs> It's because snooze is nine minutes usually. So you usually set it that it ends like because I'm that person that when I set an alarm, I hit it three times. Like that's how long it takes me to get it. So I will do it on like 9.03 to be up and out of bed by 9.30 kind of scenario. 
You know, it took me like a more than more time than I'd like to admit to realize that the uh, snoozes weren't in even ten minutes. And then, like, I, f- I found out later there was some I can't remember the reasoning behind it, but like, it made sense. It's like pretty standard across the board. Um, in my defense, though, like my dad, you know, somebody who'd survived the Korean War and stuff, was a pretty like militant about our uh, schedules and stuff. So he was like, in the mornings, you just get up. Yes, it's gonna suck. Yes, it's gonna hurt, but you're not gonna do it otherwise. <laughs> and then, like, when I got out of school and um, was on my own, yeah, I'd be one of those guys. I, I'd like hit the alarm for like an hour or hit the snooze for like an hour. So um, in the fifties, it was because of technical limitations of mechanical gears and clocks. Oh, I thought it was something. I thought it was something about human behavior. Okay, well that makes more sense then. Uh, that's the second reason, but the original mm. is the nine minute limitation because oh, of the ten minute uh, loop, basically. Oh, all right. Well, I'll learn something today. Uh, anyway, Kitty wakes up with what looks like a hangover. I mean, we know mm-hmm. what happened. I don't... She thinks that she just had a bad night's sleep and a bad nightmare. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if I ever remember having such a bad nightmare that I wake up tired. I just wake up tired because I'm old now. So, like, that must be... No, must I've, be young. <laughs> I've, I've had those where it was like, you have a dream that is so exhausting that you mm-hmm. feel more tired than you than you went to bed with. I've, I've definitely experienced that. Yeah. And then and it's it's one of those where you also, like, you woke up three times in the middle of the night because of it, and when that happens, you're less likely to remember the actual dream itself, other than you know it sucked. Oh, yeah. No, I've, I've had those before. We have, like, glimpses of stuff that did happen, you know, but you mm-hmm. can't put the memory together or something right. Um, that yeah. also happens a lot now, because I have a cat who, you know, 3 a.m. is their Olympic time. So, I'll vaguely remember, like, was somebody knocking on the window or something? And I was like, that that must have been maybe somebody was, but that must have been like her like batting at a bird or something or whatever, right. you know. And uh, but I my mind filled in something else like more creative. Yeah. Uh, but Kitty's freaking out because apparently it's the last day of school, and uh, she goes and wakes. I think it was a Scott. Kurt. Like, Kurt. It was Kurt. That's right. And it's like we're gonna be late for the last day of school, and then everybody kind of you hear the the commotion of everyone being upset about like missing the last day of school, but then they still make breakfast. I, this school must start at like nine 30 AM or something. If, if they could be waking up at eight 30 and still get there on time, it has to be nine 30 or something like that. Cause that's, is, they're not like down the street from it either. You right? know, which is wild. Cause I don't know what time school started for you. I feel like I had to be at school like at eight, sometimes a little earlier or something. Uh, if, I want to say we started at eight 30. So we had to be like in, We'd start getting drops off, drop off at eight o'clock because you know parents don't want to deal with like getting caught in traffic and that making yeah, you yeah. late and shit. So yeah, yeah. Because I, I just remember waking up with the seven in my alarm. So like you know at the yeah. beginning. So I forget if it was like I woke up at seven or seven thirty or something like that. And it was anyway. Yes, for them to wake up like after eight thirty and, and still team together to make breakfast, especially that chaotically. Yeah, and they they're all doing it like in a coordinated fashion. I want to say. Sunspot literally ripped the top of a milk carton off or an orange juice carton. Um, and they all kind of know their jobs. Like Amara is using her fire powers to cook the eggs. Bobby out of his bare hands, which feels gross <laughs> is making ice cubes. That's going into everybody's drinks. Yeah. Everybody's got a little piece of Bobby in them. Oh God. <laughs> um, But there is also a quick shot with Rogue, who's, like, getting out of the shower. Uh, The original shot, she was, like, it's because she's, like, wrapped in the towel. It was shot from here up, so I was like, are they showing naked Rogue right now for a half second? Maybe. They were not, because they showed the the pan out with it. Oh, Um, gosh, I got But then she's like, that was a weird dream. Maybe I should go to therapy. (laughs) You know, what a progressive thing to say in the early 2000s. Yeah. Um... That the goth girl needs to go to therapy. <laughs> yeah, and she self acknowledged it, and they they didn't present it as like a, a weakness necessarily. No, um, it's just something that was a little strange, or the circumstances were a little strange. And uh, then the kids do get to school, uh, presumably on time. It doesn't look they don't acknowledge that they're late or anything. It's the um, last day. Who gives a shit? <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, the kids all run in, but Rogue lays back. And you see a limo pull up, the door opens, and she just gets in. So, like, just through context clues, we're like, clearly she's being mind controlled by Mesmero. And totally silent and stuff like that. It's interesting because she was doing, like, the back and forth 
which I don't think we saw in the previous Mesmero possession where they were coming in and out of control. Mm -hmm. Whereas here she was like, she was herself this morning when she was getting out of the shower. Um, and then she decided, uh, then she like got close and then got pulled back in scenario. So, yeah. And, uh, inside, Gene and Scott are talking about their last day of school. If we didn't figure it out before, we get confirmed now that they are seniors and they'll be graduating in, which is crazy, the day after. I don't I don't know if that was common. We didn't have like we less had at than least a, day. a week between. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or well, I think we would we would end classes and then there would be like the week of finals, and then there'd mm. be like the week in between to make sure you didn't fuck up your finals, and then you would go and graduate. Yeah, I think I have to look back and see what mine was like. But I, I remember the week of finals and I, I remember there being at least the remainder of a week or something until the weekend, like a Sunday when the because, yeah, what, wasn't graduations always on Sundays, too? That I went to Catholic s schools and Jesuit schools, so stuff was Sundays. So I, I think our, I don't know if public school is different. I think our graduation was on Sunday, too, because I remember like the church, the local churches having services in the morning or something. Uh, pop culture counter to that can't hardly wait they have their graduation i think it's on a friday because the big party that happens in that movie is on the saturday night i'm gonna that's just for myself look that up later to see when i graduate I, i'm pretty sure it was a sunday but anyway if it was no. if it was a sunday thing that'd be wild be like we're on we're at school on a saturday but like it could be anything it doesn't matter um i mean i guess maybe they just they graduated on a saturday yeah, it's still just crazy that it's like yeah. today's our last day of school and tomorrow is like the walking graduation yes. uh, ceremony. Oh, uh, and to your point, we did know that at least uh, Scott and Jean were 18, which implies yeah. being seniors because yeah. of the kitty uh, driver's ed driving stuff. thing. Mm -hmm. And I guess they're the only two, right? Yeah, they're the yeah. oldest ones of the group. And then Principal Kelly stops them and kind of makes some racist remarks, basically. And yeah. Uh, like just straight up <laughs> <laughs> to their credit though this seems like if it was going to happen in any time period this is the right time period because i remember specifically now this was late 90s for me or mid to late 90s for me i remember being in middle school and our home ec teacher who was usually pretty like well-meaning and stuff telling mm -hmm. one of the girls in our class to her face in front of the rest of the class that she looked prettier with makeup on and I, oh I, even then i was like what a wild thing for an adult teacher to tell a teenage girl. <laughs> and, and then, you know, everyone realized and then she apologized. But I was like, I can't see that happening now without someone being immediately fired and becoming front page news. Um, yeah. But in the 90s, not OK, but probably still happens. So I guess Principal Kelly says that. I also had a note here. Did I just forget? Did the real Principal Kelly come back? Uh. And no, this has been the same dude the entire time. It has oh, who did I think it was? Because remember, oh. you're thinking Mystique uh, was, was Principal Myst Darkholm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was the other principal. Yes. Okay, that's what I got mis uh, mistake. I forgot there was a different principal the first season. Yes. And then Principal Kelly, we're just like, is it going to be a Senator Kelly? Like or stand there was like he got he was able to withstand the uh, the mind control right. thing that. So there was like he was implied to have powers, but I guess that was like one of those dangling plot lines between like the season two writers. And we know people like Stephen E. Gordon um, had left the show. So maybe that was one of those like, oh, we don't give a shit. Like so, somebody uh, who stayed on the show didn't bother with it kind of scenario. Actually, Stephen leaving before this season makes a lot of sense for a lot of the questions I had. And, <laughs> yeah. um, then uh, so anyway, uh, Gene and Scott just kind of like deal with it i guess they were like sure we'll be out of here tomorrow anyway and mm -hmm. we're also happy about that um oh actually so what the main thing principal kelly wanted to tell them was like don't cause any trouble at the graduation because we know like you people <laughs> and the, these kids deserve better yeah i was like okay anyway yeah. oh it was uh, very much a you people's yeah. conversation <laughs> no doubt and then uh we go over to the brotherhood house um who seen are just not going to the last day of school <laughs> Yeah, that tracks. Yeah. Um, they're kind of doing their equivalent of chores, I guess. Like, throwing shit out the windows and things. Yeah. Um, then we see Rogue kind of sneaks up to the house, which is not very hard. Which is funny, because for being the villains, they don't have a very secure premises. Um, they're the not the smart villains, though. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, she knocks on the door, 
Wanda answers it, but no one's at the door. We find out this because Rogue is like levitated above the door after she. I don't know what happened there exactly. Did she? Te- I'm guessing she teleported in and then levitated. She's also, she, but then she's also has Kitty's phasing power. Like she's like yeah, could have been anything. She's like totally doing. Um, we've discussed this character in the past, and you've you've only seen him in the uh, Age of Apocalypse uh, reference episode of ninety uh, two mimic. Who just literally could mm-hmm. spout out multiple power combinations at once. There you go. So Yeah. But she she's revealed to be levitating over Wanda inside the door and, you know, absorbs her powers, which I wanna know how that went. Like that sounds wild, you know. <laughs> this version of Wanda is not like our MCU version where the it's more daddy vendetta than crazy. Yeah, well, it's so. just mostly that, like, the powers we saw from Wanda, even in, like, the mall fight, mm-hmm. and Rogue had hung on this time long enough to knock Wanda out. Like, mm-hmm. I guess the whole thing is since she's under Mesmero's control, like, evil means you have more control. Because we saw that with Spike, too, right? Like, in the other mutants before. Yeah, there's, there's also the scenario where uh, if you're doing a thing and it hurts you, Mesmero doesn't care if it hurts you, <laughs> so it's like you have to keep holding on. Yeah. So Wanda gets knocked out, um, and then Blob is watching the Powerpuff Girls. The not Powerpuff Girls. It it was weird because the I, I don't know the monkey's name. Mojo Jojo. But he was like exactly the same. Uh, he was taller and skinnier, but okay. yeah, they were they it was it was the least subtle parody they could have done. Yeah, yeah, because in the girls themselves, the three girls, they were clearly like a little bit different stuff but like what a weird little thing because it never comes back to it it's just the thing he's watching Mm -hmm. and um even the way it's like presented it takes a second for you to for me at least to realize that it was something he was watching on tv i was like why did they just cut oh Uh, because it wasn't like in you know like it wasn't like Mm -hmm. a wide shot of a tv having it on it's just like full screen um but then rogue you know cleans house literally like absorbs lance blob toad and then quicksilver takes a second I love Toad, though, because Toad starts to, like, get away, and he's, like, hopping around, and she's using this, like, weird combination of teleports, and then finally, when he realizes he's fucked, he's like, oh, this is the part I don't like. Yeah. (laughs) It had a little bit of, like, that anime trope of, like, the Dami Mommy scenario, where he's, like, pinned against a wall, and he's like, this is gonna suck, but he's still gonna like it a little bit. (laughs) Yeah, it's like Futurama, like, uh, snoo, snoo. (laughs) Yeah. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is spongy and weak. <laughs> yeah. And then Quicksilver comes down from upstairs. Um, and then Rogue does the obvious of like, oh, well, if I lift him just above the ground telekinetically, he can't run anywhere no matter how fast he's moving. And then she snags him. Yeah. And yep. then big reveal that Mystique was the one in the limo. Mm-hmm. And she she comes out and, uh, and gets Rogue um, back at the mansion storm is sitting by the or standing by the window and it's raining outside it's in the evening time and i guess uh, maybe the kids were worried that the rain would ruin their graduation we catch storm like reassuring gene that she won't let the storm the rain ruin the graduation the next day right because gene is concerned that the weather might not be perfect for her parents who are coming to visit yeah which this is my argument to anything outdoors that's not like in california or something uh you don't plan be, on being outdoors. Yeah, you just got to be okay with it raining, whatever you're doing. Like, uh, <laughs> this is coming from a guy who used to work in, like, sound and events in the East Coast. Mm-hmm. It's like if you put a bunch of rich people in a in a space, you have to have, like, a tent contingency plan because it's probably going to rain. It's, like, a lit- literally a 50-50 chance anywhere but, mm-hmm. like, L.A. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Um, and... Let's see. Oh, uh... Rogue walks by the outside window. I guess time is supposed to have passed, like where yeah, Mystique that was that was weird, and then dropped her off back home, and then Rogue was and then picks her again. up again. Yeah, yeah, because I was like, okay, so I don't, cause, yeah, because then Mystique picks her back up. That's why I was confused by my notes. I was like, oh, that's right, this was a weird thing that happened. Yeah. Um. But no, then, you you nailed it. It was weird that they bothered showing her back home just for her to be back in the limo with Mystique, and then gives, like, the one-word response of window. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then uh, they drive off to, like, a warehouse, and Mystique has Rogue, like, touch her to absorb her powers. 
And because now she has to turn into an owl. Yeah. Which is like, I think I had just come to grips with Mystique turning into random animals that are like nowhere near shape or biology of like anything humanoid. And now we have rogue, like, and that I, I don't, I don't want to be the guy that thinks too much about things, especially about a show that is already like an extra suspension of disbelief from the property. We already know like mm-hmm. these are all high school kids, but like, right. What kind of psychological damage does that do to Rogue? She's already absorbed, like, everybody in her space. And now she has, like, fucking, like, owl thoughts and things. I don't think she gets owl thoughts. <laughs> she didn't absorb an owl, Rod. She became an owl. <laughs> um, yeah, but then... she knows she's doing... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like she ate a fucking mouse. <laughs> that we saw. That'd be funny is that was, like, uh, the beginning of the next season. Is like, her coughing up owl pellets? Yeah, and, and then she just realizes she kind of likes it or something. Uh, she, and her and Toad go, I don't know. Um, so yeah, she turns into an owl, sneaks into the warehouse. Um, we see that this is Magneto's updated compound, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, which is obviously closer because it's not in the middle of the, the you know, ski resort mountains. Yeah. Uh, no. Colossus is carrying a bunch of pallets of rant, whatever Magneto is smuggling. He just moves shit. That's his job. Yeah. And uh, Rogue absorbs his powers pretty easily because he's not mm-hmm. looking. Uh, she gets attacked by Sabretooth. Um, but he is not careful whatsoever. And she quickly like um, absorbs his powers. I do love the, the thing where he's like literally going in for like a slash and basically she catches it with the metal fist mm-hmm. and i i love the like the hybridization of her powers like there's something cool when it's like she's combining multiple things at once to make shit happen yeah somehow this did those multiple powers better than secret invasion the less we talk about secret invasion <laughs> the better our lives are right there you go um all that said when we recorded this rod and i were texting uh the night before because we did both watch the first episodes of Agatha and as of where those first two episodes are we recommend people watch it I like if you're if you're like me the first half of the first episode may irk you and at the 50% mark it absolutely redeemed itself so that's all I'm gonna say it, it's it, yeah it's um it, like you said purposely uh rough although I'll say the same thing that I said to one of my friends who messaged me if it was a good show I, I said I like it uh, if you liked WandaVision and Multiverse of Madness and want to know what happened to Wanda and Agatha, then there's a good, healthy chance you'll probably like Agatha so far. Mm-hmm. Um, then my friend said, I didn't like either of those things. I was like, then why? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, she absorbs Sabretooth. Pyro arrives. Pyro tries to murder her because he just makes a giant wall of uh, flame and then she walks through it like a badass. Yeah, okay, she did completely like metallicized. Yeah, she did full <laughs> full metal. So, um, And then we get the square off between her and Gambit, which I love because even though this version of Gambit hasn't gotten a ton of exposure to Rogue, he also knows a lot of what's going on. Like, he's actually very clever as the thief, which I thought was really cool. Um, and he's like, oh, you're not alone in this. Probably with Mystique. But what's Mystique's game in all this? And then she actually kissed him to drain his power. And I thought that was fantastic use of that character. Yeah, it was a nice little nod to what the history you normally know b- between mm-hmm. those two. I also, my note here was, like, they, they have this, like, hybrid, like, fight and flirt mm-hmm. I mean it ended with the kiss obviously well um, and in, in this one she's not doing the flirting because it's the mind controlled oh, version yeah, no, he is he is he's yeah. doing the, fl- the flirt whereas like we know like in the comics in, in 92 and 97 the flirting is usually mutual so it's really funny seeing it be one sided and stoic as hell but she's also the quote unquote more bad one in the in this scenario. So yeah, that's why I took it as like it made sense for her to kiss him because yeah. she kind of recognized that was the vulnerability. Like he's kind of being a little flirty, and then she's like, "Okay, well, here, <laughs> this is what you yeah. want." Uh, Magneto arrives, sees everyone taken out, and just he's smart too. He's like, "Rogue, <laughs> where are you?" <laughs> mm-hmm. I also love that he is proud at this point. It's it's uh insinuated that he has let uh mastermind go because she doesn't even need to absorb him 
Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't think about yeah. that. Now, here's something I went back and watched, and I don't know if I just missed it or if I was supposed to gather something. He has he has he recognizes that Gambit is rogue. Like a split second before, did, did he notice something that I didn't notice right before that, or he just got the wrong vibe? Uh, he saw pe- multiple people passed out, so that's how he knew it was Rogue. Oh, and the Gambit just happened to be the last one? Yes. Okay, so it was just framing. I thought he saw something on Gambit, or he saw Gambit twice or something, and then... No, I, th- I think it was just, who who is a strong enough powerhouse to take out all of these people? Gotcha. And she unmorphs and get, absorbs uh, Magneto's powers, too, which is hilariously unceremonious for how much of a villain he was set up to be for the last couple seasons. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> Especially since this is like the super powered version of him too. After oh, that's right. After they did the uh, Captain America stuff and everything, I forgot about that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And it's then, not old man Magne- uh, Magneto. This is like closer to his prime Magneto. Yeah. So. And then at the graduation, um, I got to be honest. This is the first time in uh, I, wanna, I guess a couple seasons, almost two seasons now, that I've had that high school like nostalgia thing come back since the first season because mm-hmm. when we watched the first season anybody that was with us then like remember we we're like oh this was how it was like in high school everything was like high school memories it was like 90 percent high school memories and 10 percent x-men stuff yeah it was trauma bonding yeah <laughs> yeah and uh then so we're seeing the graduation here and i was like oh man yeah that it is kind of like because they showed they had this pan over the crowd of the the kids in their uh caps and gowns and they're all like hugging and you know talking and stuff and i'm like yeah that is like a weird thing and this happened to me both in high school and college when you realize i'm never gonna see these people again mm-hmm. but you're also like celebrating so i wasn't sad i don't think anybody was really sad i even remember my college graduation when you really know you're not gonna see people again and mm-hmm. like taking pictures with people and stuff and like what a weird thing that's just normal like you spend yeah. like four years of your life with like a lot of people in, especially in college like in living situations we saw all all of us saw each other in compromising situations for years <laughs> and then yeah. trauma bonded through like schooling and stuff and then one day we all like walk through a hallway receive a piece of paper and then wave goodbye after taking photos and then we don't talk for like 30 years <laughs> yeah and then you see them post something problematic on facebook and right. you're like unfollow well, yeah. uh what i thought was interesting is gene's family arrives and scott is like no go be with them so she doesn't even introduce this guy who's like presumably her boyfriend to her parents. Like maybe I guess they'd met him in the past, but that'd still be weird then to not like say hi to them and stuff. I don't know. It was a, it was a weird choice for for her to not be like, no, come say hi to my say hi to my dad. You know. I think I actually caught Scott saying something like, "Who's that?" So I got the feeling that he didn't even he had never met them before. Mm. Um, which is like, I just have to keep reminding myself, like, this is a different universe of X-Men and they're not even really dating yet. Even if you put cruise control before this, (laughs) (laughs) they help, they don't help us with the timeline of the relationship at all. Uh, I like how storm just literally takes credit for the weather. Right. And it's like one of those things where you don't know. Yeah, you know? <laughs> like, did you actually do anything, or are you just taking credit because it was going to be a nice day? Yeah. Uh, but also, if you are, a little bit of an abuse of power. Right. <laughs> It'd be funny as if, uh, if like, Deadpool was there. He'd be like, well, let's find out, and just, like, knocks her out. Mm-hmm. And if the weather gets shitty again, we're like, oh, okay, well, she was doing a good job. <laughs> Deadpool knocking out Storm would just be, like, the worst retribution ever for him after that. Like, she would fry him, like, East Toad in X-Men. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Then during the actual graduation ceremony, which this, gra- so for me specifically, this graduation ceremony seemed really um, uh, relatable because I came from a small high school. So they showed maybe about, like, 100 or less students out there in those chairs, mm-hmm. and that's about how my graduating class was. Yeah, mine um, was only about 150. So yeah, not yeah. not too dissimilar. Now we were in Indiana and we're in dumbasses. So instead of being out on a football field wondering if it's going to rain, we were inside mm. the gym. You know? <laughs> we we did football. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and oh, no, no, did we do gym? We did the gym. You're right. Is, is nothing wrong about having it outside? But if w- worrying about rain is you know, it's a, it's a legitimate you know concern between be, uh, because most graduations are between spring and summer like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a good chance it could rain. Uh, yeah. And then Kelly gives, like, 
I mean, there, there's no other way to say it. He gives a, like, basically a MAGA speech at that point. Like, not, like, not even subtle shit. Yeah, yeah, I might even know is Kelly gives a racist speech. Um, yeah, did, may, he, what did he say? Uh, you, you'll have to persevere even though some students will have more advantages over mm-hmm. you than others. And it's like, okay. Yeah, he's just, like, sowing those seeds right there. <laughs> And then um, uh, it, we oh. do get a quick shot of Scott and Jean holding hands uh, mm-hmm. next to each other, though. So they're in, like at least trying for a relationship, but we have no indication that they've actually had that talk yet. I I am convinced they have not had the talk yet. Yeah. I they if if after the multiple episodes that we thought they had had the talk and they still didn't, they have not had the talk. So and uh, if we do put cruise control after this. They still haven't had the talk, definitely. <laughs> right. Um, anyway, Kelly's speech is just in time for the Brotherhood to arrive. Uh, With the we, Acolytes. It's it's all of them together. Which we kind of got a hint of, because when they were doing the pan over of the, the graduating class, we saw Quicksilver walking away from mm. the kids and stuff. So um, I didn't think about that until later. Because um, I remember they being odd things like, where was he going? And it's like, oh, because oh, he was going with the the bad guys i guess um right well because at this point we know that he is in charge of the brotherhood because he's reporting up to his dad remember mm-hmm. when gambit came back and put him in charge of the group so yeah and kelly looks up and he's like oh great See, just what i told you it's like well yeah. you, you're you're wrong and you're right in that like you were right that something kind of was going to happen but you addressed the wrong kids about it mm-hmm. <laughs> um but and they chase all the civilians away, except for Kelly. I guess he's just not afraid. Well, to your point, like maybe he has some sort of power. I, or dumb. I guess, but he also doesn't like. I I I hope we get even if we know the series ends on a little bit of a cliffhanger. I want there to be some resolution for Kelly. That's what yeah. I want. So. He he dies, and <laughs> <laughs> his head blows up. Yeah. Um. Then uh, Magneto clarifies they're there because. Uh, they they want to uh, deal with Rogue because she took out everybody, mm-hmm. and not only are there witnesses, the actual victims are there. <laughs> yeah, oh. uh, I love the defense on Rogue is uh, she just gets put in the middle of a bunch of metal folding chairs that are yeah. swirling around her. That took me a second to realize what was happening because I was like, "Is that her? Is that you know Magneto?" Because then there was that flash of Mesmero. And I'm like, right. I'm losing track of who's where and mm-hmm. like, what, what's happening. Um, yeah. But when she, once she breaks free of the metal chairs, which surprisingly wasn't like the most bulletproof defense. It was it was not really <laughs> strong, especially if, of all the power sets that she absorbs. She's just kind of able to like, one, use his magnetism to get rid of it and then fly off. And everybody's just standing there with like their dick in their hand. Like, yeah. oh, fuck. <laughs> and... Uh, that's magneto clarifies like yeah this is what happened with her um and then the brotherhood i I do like we see yet again though real quick when like the chaos is breaking out and they're surrounding her with chairs uh kitty dodges multiple chairs and then then gets hit with a chair (laughs) because she literally will like dodge two things or run through two walls but then turns off her phasing at the wrong time every fucking time she ran out of that stamina meter for the power. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a video game. It's the it's the jet pack that I'm using right now in Fortnite to to stay in the air as War Machine. That is a good point. I forgot to write this down because it has mostly to do with the second part of this, the next episode, but it starts mm-hmm. kind of here. This all seems like it was written as a video game script. Like everything's like a level up and then team split and then there's like these little like um uh directives you know and stuff so especially like quick time event type shit kind of yeah yeah um and then here we're oh i say kind of started it was like when she had the the chair circling her is like okay now spam your a button until you can like fly out mm-hmm. um but then the brotherhood and x-men have this realization that they will have to put their differences aside and work together and of course the first two who disagree with that are wolverine and saber tooth mm-hmm. because they can't just fucking get it over with <laughs> right well because it was like wolverine was going to go by himself and magneto's like no nah, i don't want anybody going by themselves so you two go with them looks at gambit and saber and i know gambit's inner monologue is just looking at saber and wolverine and be like they're gonna fuck or they're gonna fight and i don't want to deal with either right and 
He's both, not wrong. <laughs> both almost happen. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, I love so the next shot is them on their motorcycles like following the scent for Rogue and they all have three very different helmets like Wolverine has like the bucket helmet Sabretooth has like this like kind of cool like I don't know like biker boy style helmet but it's up so it doesn't really stop anything Mm -hmm. and Gambit is just like what the fuck man like he's so not happy about being in this group yeah he's a chaperone of Mm -hmm. the group and he's like probably the youngest because we don't know how old Sabretooth is, but we're still assuming he's about the same age as Wolverine, right? Well, I would imagine he's got to be like, G- sorry, Gambit in specifics, like no older than 19 is yeah. my guess. Like, I, th- I think he's like 18 or 19 because I don't think even in 2003, they would have done the Rogue and Gambit kiss if she's roughly 17, if he wasn't very close in age. The, yeah. That is like a really somebody's going to do a study of media at that point to see when that flip happened with the age appropriate. Oh, yeah. Like when somebody's cool with like the 15, 21 relationship and like all that, we, that shit that wouldn't fly now. Yeah. Remember that show uh, Step by Step? Of course. Um, I didn't notice. Cody. This. Yeah. Cody. Like because the uh, what, Cody was a problem. What, the girl that was his girlfriend. Um, she's on a podcast now about the show. And she was uh-huh. like, yeah, no one asked about how old Cody was. Uh, he could live on his own in a van, but he's dating a high schooler. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, because it's the two of the sisters have a podcast together. Oh, is that right? who it is? Okay. I think, I think one was the... One was Suzanne Summers' daughter, and then the other one was uh, Patrick Duffy's daughter, okay. and they were like they're on the podcast together. I think I think I've seen that too. Yeah, because uh, I'll, I'll be honest, ninety percent of my podcast consumption is through clips on TikTok or Reels, so mm-hmm. <laughs> that's where I saw it. Um, oh yeah, that's where I saw that. I saw that too. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. But yeah, um, and then so they they're going after uh, Rogue, Mystique, and Mesmero, and right, but they don't know Mesmero at the time still. Yeah. Um, they're just going after Rogue, basically. Um, mm-hmm. And then uh, we see that the rest of the team is going to try to figure out what's happening with Apocalypse. I love, they straight up just have them at the mansion. Like, l- yeah. literally, they let Magneto into, like, the computer room and everything. <laughs> like, he's getting free reign right now. Yeah. So. And Beast is on the computer that is not Cerebro. I went back and checked that. Right, uh, it's just a computer. Yeah, <laughs> it's a giant wall computer thing. Um, looking for Apocalypse. Uh, Xavier uh, reveals, like... Oh, wait, that's a little bit later. Sorry, there's the... Real quick, yeah. they uh, they say that they need to put mental blocks in to help defend against Mesmero's power, because... Uh, oh, I missed that. That makes Xavier, sense later. Xavier knows what it's like when people are doing the possession and stuff like that. Sorry, right. I was wrong. They do actually know it's Mesmero at that point. They don't know Mystique is there. That's the piece they don't know. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then Beast is looking through a bunch of ancient Egyptian stuff, can't find anything. And then Magneto's like, well, don't use Apocalypse, use his given name and Sabanur. So, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. And it's when they say it's a, uh, it's, uh, means the first one. Uh, which- yeah. So we get the, um, we get Wolverine and Sabretooth really quick uh, trashing a car. Um, they're both Sniffing. smelling and stuff like that. Um, they're ready to fight. Um, fight. And Gambit's like, yeah, <laughs> Gambit's <laughs> playing Peacemaker. And then we get the uh, the history dump on um, Apocalypse. So how much of this did you start to to know about Apocalypse? Like, what did you know any of that stuff from from any of your non-comic uh, fandom? Uh, I think I knew of the story in the broadest terms. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't know Ramatut had anything to do with it. Um, yep. I, I just kind of assumed that this might have been the evolution version of this. I didn't know that, like, they implied that Ramatut was either a time traveler or an alien. Mm-hmm. Um, I did. I don't... They didn't necessarily connect why uh, Apocalypse was left as a baby in the desert. They just said it happened at the same time. Right. So uh, he was left in the desert because he was a mutant. And Uh, then Baal, who is the head of this tribe that uh, found him, that stuff is accurate to the comics, including Ramatut. Gotcha. Okay. And if you've ever dove a little deeper into MCU stuff, Ramatut is a version of Kang. 
Oh, that's right. I did see that back uh, a couple years ago when we were going to get the Kang stuff. <laughs> yeah. Because I, um, I think he, but, uh, he makes a cameo, like a visual cameo on Moon Knight, I think, right? I don't remember on that part, w- to be the, totally honest. One of the... Somebody in Egypt on the back of their jacket had a Rama Tut thing. I think that was an Easter egg. And Oh, was, I missed that one. It, but I think it was like, we're probably not going to go back to that jacket now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but for the most part, all of the Rama Tut stuff was accurate to uh, to the comics. So I think that's part of why th- this pair of episodes is probably some of my favorite from Evolution because it felt like a superhero show. Finally, yep. I also might have jumped ahead on that part, but it's fine. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, they mentioned that it was five thousand years ago. He appeared in Giza. Um, and then Xavier uses Cerebro to amplify the memories from Mesmero's mind, and he knows that it is inside of the Sphinx. So, yeah, which is funny. We'll see in a little bit. Like, didn't help. It wasn't quite accurate. Mm-hmm. So even with Cerebro's help, like Xavier could only get so far. Um, we see the the team that was going after Apocalypse arrive in Egypt. We it implies that there was. A realistic travel time because Xavier had fallen asleep in the jet. Well, you did jump ahead on one little part. They, you get the air traffic control that uh, Gambit, Sabretooth, and Wolverine go into. Mm-hmm. They start fighting and they have tracked a stolen jet that's already over California and about to cross the uh, Pacific. I'm pretty sure the radar doesn't work like that. That <laughs> if you're in New York, it's not tracking where that jet is in in California. Just. I don't. There's something that doesn't line up the way radar tracking works, but Just that's probably for and get the one CD wrong. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, then when they arrive in Egypt, I like how they. This was like for me, it was like really cool uh, how they decided to get into the tomb. They send Kitty down with like a scoop, like scuba gear, basically. She basically goes like deep sea diving, but through solid matter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, she has a she has a mask on, um, which I was like, I don't know why she needs the mask other than like. I don't know, curses or some shit. <laughs> okay. I'm going to clip this part. Out, right? yep. Curses. Um, curses or some shit. That should be murder. I don't know. Like, yeah. isn't that the worry every time that uh, somebody opens up a tomb? It's not necessarily that there's a curse there, but there may be like some diseased, gross thing that could like wipe out a half of humanity kind of scenario. Well, th- that's what I assumed. I, th- I, th- yeah. I assumed that like once she got into like air, that they didn't know what was going to be in it. it. You know, it had been sealed for thousands of years, presumably. Um, I do like that they acknowledged a little bit later that it was kind of messed up to send a young girl by herself, or at least Kitty mm-hmm. reacted to it. She wasn't just like fearless about it. So yeah, she was doing the thing where she was like sitting on the ground and like kind of like rocking back and self or back and forth by herself. Yeah, and I think uh, when Nightcrawler Kurt. got in there, yeah. he was like, "Oh, this is this is bad or whatever." She's like, "I was down here alone, man." Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> and we don't know for how long. Because they had her, they went through. I don't know how Beast knew this, but they went through the instructions of how she could open the door for everybody. Yeah, from the is, inside. To be fair, the instructions were: Is there a thing that looks like a button? Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Press the thing that looks like a button. Would have been really morbid is if we just hear the radio on Beast's side and it's just her screaming and she's like, I, "It took my hand." Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and then we see there are uh, everybody uh, goes down. Um, there are four different statues of Egyptian gods. One is Anubis. That's the, you know, the, the one that everybody's most familiar with. Uh, Horus is the one that looks more like a uh, hawk or an eagle. Uh, I think it's Huther or Hother is the one that looks more like a crow with the, like the big long beak mm-hmm. on it. Um, and has can, I apologies if I'm saying that wrong, but that's the one that looked like a giant snake. Oh, gotcha. So, okay. It was not the thing I hated from Moon Knight, which was the giant crocodile. <laughs> the, the kaiju. <laughs> because it specifically had snake fangs and not the snout of a crocodile. Oh, gotcha. Yes. Yeah. And um, those said statues start animating. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're sp- I think we're supposed to get like a mystic kind of vibe from that. Like there was a curse or some shit. Mm-hmm. And then um the tomb door closes behind him and i think it's scott that yells like we're trapped to then, be continued yeah, tense string music and to be continued <laughs> yeah. 
Um, it definitely follows the pattern that this show has done of their season finales being big, lots of characters, like very set PC and stuff like that, mm-hmm. which leads like gives more credence to what we know about cruise control being aired out of order. <laughs> I try to, yeah, once we get to cruise control, we'll talk about it, but like, yeah, I want to start taking some guesses of where I know you, we said where you thought where it was supposed to be, but like, it was supposed, it was supposed to be before X 23, but like where we would make more sense just in general, regardless of intentions and stuff. So it was a weird yeah. little episode. Yep. Uh, but yeah, no, I, th- there's not much to say about this because this is basically a setup for the next episode, which I, I like both of these, but the next one is like the action packed one. To be fair, we've been saying stuff about it for 50 minutes. So, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was a, it was a lot of, a lot of fun. Uh, and to me, like one of the few times it actually felt like X-Men finally. It know. felt like a comic book issue. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, I got more thoughts and we'll get into that into the next one, but yeah, it was, uh, you know it's it's a solid start to the end of a season i feel like Mm -hmm. so cool uh and then just a quick reminder we forgot to shout out at the beginning if you have it make sure you listen to last week's episode even if you're please don't do those out of order because that's weird where we had john risinger of tales from the stinky dragon um uh who was our x23 expert which was awesome having him join us so yeah he was hilarious he was a lot of fun to have on I mean, he does do professional yes and for, you know, his career at this point. So, yep. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, Rod, we found the spot where I messed up on the script. So oh, I'm going to close this out. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, it's supposed to be you because of our normal order, but I messed it up. So I will handle it. Thank you guys for joining us. If you have any thoughts, make sure to drop them into the comments for either the YouTube upload, the official Instagram post about this episode, or the Spotify comments section. Uh, because that's a thing. And if you like what we heard, we appreciate a rating on the podcast app you're choosing. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, Spotify, YouTube Podcasts, and of course, make us number one on CastBox. Number one CastBox. Box. Box. <laughs> Botch. <laughs> CastBotch? Yeah. <laughs>